Hello everyone. 2023 is coming to an end and this is going to be the last episode of Enterprise Architecture Radio in the year 2023. So today I'm not going to talk about any specific topic but more in general about how 2023 was. Specifically big ticket items that happened in 2023. And I would like to start with large language model. OpenAI came out with its first generative AI large language model, ChatGPT, and Microsoft immediately aligned with OpenAI, made a large investment in OpenAI, and came out with its own co-pilot. Copilot is now integrated with all office products, all development products, etc., etc., and it has had a major impact on the technology and in to the IT industry as a whole. It has definitely improved the productivity of developers. In fact, I was thinking about this. When I started learning programming, um, I did my diploma in advanced computing from an organization called Center for Development in Advanced Computing. And I remember when I was preparing for the entrance test of CDAC, I was, I used to write balance trees uh, as an algorithm. I was studying data structures and algorithms and, you know, I used to sit down and write balance trees in C and C++. And I remember it to be a very difficult task because it used to take a lot of effort in trying to understand how to write the, the, the algorithm. But now ChatGPT can do it very quickly. All I have to say is, you know, you know, type in that into chat GPT, please write the code for a balance tree and it's done. So there's something that, that has been introduced in 2023 called prompt engineering. How well you define your prompt to chat GPT will define how accurate code chat GPT generates. So that's an interesting new area. People have also talked about how chat GPT is going to take away jobs, how it's going to impact the industry as a whole from a, employment standpoint um, and that has overall created a major impact to the IT industry. Then we have enterprise architecture. Now the worth of enterprise architecture has increased in 2023. People are a little bit more aware of what enterprise architecture is. In fact, I was as a general exercise, not that I'm looking for a job or anything. I used to be an enterprise architect nine, ten years ago uh, and then I have moved into a different kind of a role in which I still have the enterprise architecture mindset, but my title is no longer enterprise architect. But I'm interested in the things that are happening in the enterprise architecture world, and that is why this podcast. So I was looking at the job descriptions that are out there for enterprise architects, and I've been looking at this for many years now, and and I've seen it evolve. I've seen uh, in the old days, enterprise architecture used to mean someone who knew almost everything. You know, they expected the enterprise architect to know programming. They expected him to know uh, infrastructure. They expected them to know DevOps. They expected them to know, uh, to be a full stack developer, latest programming languages, you know, all kinds of technologies and what have you, automation, etc. But slowly that definition of enterprise architecture is changing. It is less about technologies and more about uh, business, more about value that an enterprise architect generates for the organization. And the the value of the field of enterprise architecture has also improved. Along with that, TOGAF 10 came out this year. So TOGAF 10 uh, has some differences in how the framework is. TOGAF 9.2 was a little bit bureaucratic, um, more from a standpoint of looking at the entire organization and being the governance body that makes sure that everything is as per standard. And that is all right. It continues to be that. Uh, It's just that it's now more open to newer ideas. It's more turnaround times have improved. You know, the framework has been designed in such a way that they've taken into account digital enterprises. They've accepted the fact that digital technologies are going to have an impact on the business. So earlier, they used to believe that technology should always follow the business strategy. Now they've come to realize that sometimes technology also drives the business strategy. So, so they've introduced the concept of digital enterprises. They've also introduced the concept of agility uh, and organizational agility, enterprise agility, also sprints and how to use sprints to do enterprise architecture. So all of that has been introduced in 2023. So enterprise architecture itself has become quite quite agile, so to speak. 
There's also the enterprise architecture tools. They have also become more advanced. I have personally used Orbis Software's iServer many, many years ago when I used to be an enterprise architect. And after I left the field of enterprise architecture specifically and moved on to a different role, uh, I have followed it and they came up with iServer. iServer's uh, last version was called iServer 365, which has now been renamed to Orbis Infinity. And from what I hear, they are using artificial intelligence in doing enterprise architecture. So that's uh, another development that's happened. Uh, enterprise architecture is getting smarter, faster, more agile, and so on. And then there's the concept of Conway's Law. Conway's Law I will cover in one of the other episodes, but in very, very short, Conway's Law means we are designing the software, so uh, designing the software team's hierarchy based on the organizational or business hierarchy and so on. And then there's also the reverse Conway Law, Conway's Law, which basically says that we design the software and then we design the organization based on the software. Now, this is very specific to software, but uh, what I'm really trying to say is earlier there used to be business drives technology. Now we are also looking at how technology can drive the business. So, you know, more about that at some other point in time in some other episode. Another thing that happened was since 2020 um, and the COVID lockdown and everything, uh, remote working had made a very big impact on the uh, on the IT industry as a whole. This year, most of the organizations around the world have started creating a hybrid work environment where some part of the work you can work, uh, some part of the week you can work from home or from anywhere, basically remotely. And they are expecting you to come to work at least two or three days in a week. So hybrid has become a more normal way of working now. And that has also had an impact. Many people have left their jobs just because they cannot work remotely anymore and they have to come to work. And then there are other people who prefer going to work also, previously, before COVID, the norm was that you have to uh, swipe in every day, you know, and the number of hours that you spend at work is counted. And then remote working came in, which was the other extreme. Now, what's happened is organizations are looking at how much of your presence is required at work and how does it add value. People management roles or team leadership roles are expected to come to work a few days a week so that they can come and manage the team and there is a certain amount of face-to-face -face connect. But people who are in individual contributor roles, etc., are looking, are continuing to work remotely in some organizations. Of course, every organization has their own system, their own policies, but, but they're looking at the presence at work from a value-add point of view rather than just a simple swipe in every single day. So that's a trend that is coming up. And then finally, since we're talking about people and new ways of working and so on, one of the things that's happened is that there was a large number of layoffs all around the world. Many organizations have laid off people um, and in large chunks to save money. And, and laying off people from a cost saving standpoint has caused quite a lot of concern around the world, you know, job security and uh, and psychological safety and, and, and so on have become, mental health has become very, very important when it comes to, you know, um, employment. But it's not the layoffs that are really causing the uh, impact on the people uh, as much as the way the layoffs have been done. Uh, there have been organizations that have laid off people over emails while they were on vacations and they've come to know that they've received a pink sleep and so on. And, and, and the people who were not laid off have gone into an extremely, um, you know, one is the survivor's guilt where they, they feel that, you know, they feel guilty for not being laid off, which is, you know, a thing these days. And the second thing is that it also removes the psychological safety that, okay, am I going to have a job tomorrow or not? Or are they going to lay me off as well? And that has impacted the performance. So organizational leaders who are listening to this or who are, are in the decision-making role of doing layoffs, they need to understand the impact that this can have on psychological safety and the performance of the organization as a whole. And you know, think about this, that 
it's i understand that laying off people is necessary sometimes from a cost standpoint if the the role has been eliminated or the work that is being done by those people is impacted because of uh, you know various business reasons but it's very important to understand that laying off the people in the right way making sure that they are safe making sure that other or people who are not being laid off understand the value of people and then understand that the leadership is not um, you know just laying off people like they are some kind of machines or what have you uh, is very important it's very important that it be done appropriately so that's been the year um, it was a good year it was a bad year it was the best of times it was the worst of times uh, we've all survived it Uh, some of us have grown in it others have learned how to fit um good year all in all 2024 is coming and in my next episode in all probability like everybody else i'm going to try to predict what's going to happen in 2024 what are the technologies that are going to rise in their importance in the way that they add value to the organization if there are any topics that you would like me to cover in my upcoming episodes please let me know Once again I'd like to remind you that Enterprise Architecture Radio is not just a podcast it is a collaboration platform it is a uh, a a place where enterprise architects can get together and talk and discuss various topics and help each other out and learn from each other but most importantly have fun and by the way I hope you have very happy holidays and I hope you spend a good amount of time with your family or whatever it is that you do during your holidays and come back refreshed for a brand new 2024 have fun